Welcome everyone to a uh, new uh, session of uh, Yeshiva Classroom and uh, we're going to try something very different today. We're going to start out with the viewers test. You, the viewer out there, uh, are being tested and I'm going to explain. Uh, I'm going to uh, give you a, a question and I want you to think about it and uh, here, here's the question. Suppose you gave a loved one a gift, whether it's a spouse or a child, whatever, a friend, and the friend loves it. He feels so happy uh, about the gift. And uh, so what does that make you feel? You, you feel happy that he enjoys it. You feel good that he enjoys the gift. Again, I'm going to give you the question right after this because there may be some late tutor inners. And again, I'm going to repeat the, uh, the test that I'm giving the viewers, you out there, wherever you are. And the test is, suppose you have a gift and you give it to a friend and the friend enjoys it. He loves it so much. So you feel great. You feel good. Now the question I'm posing to you is where... Now you, you understand what I'm saying. You feel good. And I'm sure you all experience that good feeling that you get when you give over something, uh, a good deed, or, or you're learning something. Uh, it's a good feeling. Now the question is, where does that feeling emanate from? Again, the viewers out there, take a few seconds, you feel the, you, 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 you gave the gift, you feel good, because the recipient loves it, and that feeling of feeling good, where is it? Is it take a few seconds, and and pretend you're giving over that gift and that friend enjoys it, right? And you feel, you feel good, right? Where is that feeling? Where does it emanate from? Do you, do you feel it in your stomach? I, I'm sure you feel it, right? If you, if you haven't started it, you, do it now. I want everybody to pretend that they, that they, they feel good because they gave over something to a loved one. And that feeling you experience now, right? You, f you feel it? You feel that, that feeling? Where is it? it? You know, is it your gut? Is it your heart? You know what I'm talking about. And, and, and that's, that's the question that I want you, to, you all to dwell on. Because that feeling is not a, a, a heart it, it, or a lung or an organ. That's your soul, S-O-U-L, S-O-U-L. And the soul enjoys that good feeling and it accumulates that good feeling so that our demise will be able to turn that in, like turning in a book of green stamps. Uh, at, the, uh, at the completion. So that feeling uh, is good. And the Torah says, and we say every day in, in our prayers, that uh, the, uh, the doing of good deeds and the learning of the Torah is without limit. You can do them as often and it is for your benefit because the interest remains here, but the principle comes to the next world with you. Now, we gave you a, a theoretical and, and a, a practical question that you, could, that you could feel, that you could understand. And now we're going to go, that is it's talking about good deeds. Good deeds, helping people, uh, making peace be, between, uh, uh, between friends, uh, uh, accompanying uh, the dead uh, because that's a chesed shalem, 
that the kindness that you're not going to reciprocate, that no one's going to reciprocate to you, that thieves cannot reciprocate that. Uh, uh, dowering the bride, helping uh, the poor, helping the poor, uh, giving charity uh, to the needy. So all of those things uh, are, are, are not only good deeds, but there are, they, they are, 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 are the Torah directives, and you feel that, and that's uh, important to accumulate. But I'm going to tell you something more, and that is, it says that good deeds are very important, but all of those those charitable acts are important, but the learning of Torah is equal to all of them. The learning of Torah is equal to all of them because learning Torah gives you the good, gives you just like you, you, you receive the good deed, you also receive a, 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 good, a good mark and a good feeling when you learn Torah. You get that good feeling, and that's and and they count as as a, a double of grants when when you do that. And what does the Torah say? I'm going to give you a a a, a kasha a, 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 because that's how we we learn Torah, right? Torah. It says in the Torah, right? We're going to do. We we just now went over doing good deeds. And get that good feeling. Now we're going to get the good feeling from Torah, from learning Torah. And how is that accomplished? By Akasha and a terrace. That's how we learn. It's not just opening up a book and reading. Of course, there's our gutta parts where you can, uh, uh, where it, it, it breaks off a little bit of the uh, question and answer. But basically, I'm going to give you a kasha, a question and an answer from the Torah, from the Chumash, from the five books of Moses that was given at Mount Sinai. Right? And here's the question. It says over there in the Torah that the Egyptians enslaved you for 210 years. And, and, and they killed and murdered you. And they threw your babies into the Nile River. Yet, when the Torah speaks of Amalek, a wicked group that attacked the, the feeble and the infirmed on the leaving, uh, and the leaving, um, uh, and entering Israel, it says over there that that his name, the Amalek, those of Amalek should be wiped out, driven out. They're the e they're evil. They are evil, hating. Period. Hating. And the question is right. Here's the question: How come the Amalek? have to be driven out and not remembered but the Egyptians who murdered and killed and did horrific acts against the Jewish people are uh, are able to re-enter the the Jewish people through marriage into the third generation they're, they're able to re-enter and marry into the Jewish people. You hear the question? The question is, the Egyptians did horrific acts for 210 years, and they can come back into to the family of Israel. Well, Amalek did one evil act one evil act, and he's banned for life, he is to be driven out. You hear the question? Now you have to review it in your own mind. Because you know what? 
there's, there's always these uh, advertisements of coming to learn and and learn a, a page of Talmud a day or learn uh, a, a, a two pages of uh, a, a daf a, a, a day but there's a lot of people that are not even on first base they don't get the question how are they going to come in and learn a page of Gemara when they don't even know like the simple questions like I propose now and, and, and the question is right and some people are going to get it some people are going to jump to an answer but they don't get the question and the question is how come the Egyptians can re-enter Israel the family and marry into this family after they did 210 years uh, of, of, of horrific acts against us and and the and the Amalek did one act or banned for life those are two psukim, two sentences in the Torah that that present a kasha to you I want everybody out there to think about what I said and how it presents a stira, a contradiction that two sentences should contradict each other. There must be an explanation. I want to count to ten while you think of the kasha and review it in your mind because certain people are not going to get it even if I explain it now once. Re review it in your mind. 210 years, they can enter. One act, they're banned forever. So that's the, the question. And getting the question uh, is, 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 is difficult. Some questions are easy, some are harder. So the answer is, by the Egyptians, that was, that was rational hatred. What do I mean, rational hatred? They had experienced a small group in a few generations previously called the Icus, and they uh, they came to Egypt and they took over took over the the the, the uh, they took over the country, and they made their own power. And the Egyptians didn't want that to happen again because they saw the same thing with the Jewish people coming in as a small group. So they, they wanted to hate them, and it was a rational hatred. Right? We're doing the answer. Rational hatred. While the other Amalek hated and did horrific acts for no reason. It was pure, unadulterated hatred. And that is a no-no. And those are evil people. They have to be d driven out. And, you know, there's other little, little queries uh, that, that are interesting. <clears throat> you know, it, it, we're, we're, we're doing this program on uh, January the uh, 21st, Sunday, uh, 2024. This is tape number 472. And it's the Pasha uh, ending with a bow, and it says over there, uh, regarding Pesach, it says over there that you should do no work on this holiday except for food that you can prepare on that day. So we have, it's called a Binyan Av, a model. It should be a model for all the holidays. Sukkot, Shavuot, Rosh Hashanah. It should be a model that no work is allowed uh, and except for, for food for the, uh, that day. So that's called one of the ways of learning Torah, Binyanav. And there's another beautiful thought 
that, uh, you know, it says it rained manna. It rained manna. What does it mean? Manna came from heaven. Just like rain comes from heaven, we should learn out that manna comes from heaven. Another support that manna came from heaven. And uh, here's another little thought. Uh, you know, in, in, in chapter 29 in, in uh, Deuteronomy, the book of Deuteronomy, it says all the people were gathered. Uh, the uh, B'nai Yisrael, uh, the uh, uh, the people who uh, uh, converted those that uh, were uh, 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 staying there temporarily all came before uh, the wood uh, chopper, the uh, water hauler. They all came before uh, before Moses and they passed through 29.13 in Deuteronomy. Look it up, 29.13 in Deuteronomy, and they pass through together with the imprecations, together with all the 98 curses, uh, all the 98 curses that would befall them if they, if they didn't stop, if they didn't stop uh, doing transgressions. Now, there's an interesting thought on the um, Holocaust, you know, why did God allow the six million to be systematically annihilated? And, and, and one answer is that God in his kindness saw that that generation was the largest group of people in our history that began to uh, turn the defect, defect from from Jewish Judaism, and they took all kind of isms, but they uh, they wanted to defect, and they were defecting, and God in His infinite wisdom says, "I'll save these little people and these infants and young people, and I'll bring them automatically uh, to the next world, and they will." That they will uh, earn the next world because the, sur the soul re in, in Kehelet, uh, uh chapter uh, 12 verse 7 the soul returns to God who gave it the soul returns to God who gave it in Genesis Bereshit, the first book of the Bible of the Jewish Bible it says uh, that God breathes the soul into the nostrils of man, into the nostrils of man. So uh, we're, we're giving you some, some uh, different types of uh, kashas and, and, and answers. And you know, it says over there in, in Parshas Bo that in Exodus that we're reading now, right? We're reading the book of Exodus. It says over there that that uh, you should uh, break the, the neck of the donkey if he does not, if you do not liberate the lamb. You should break the neck, the stiff neck of the donkey if he does not liberate the lamb. Lamb being the Jewish children. And the stiff neck being Paro. So that's what happened. Paro let the people go, and we took the lamb as the core, as the offering uh, for Pesach. Well, still, so you, you know, that, well. yeah, and, and, and also, uh, there's a lot of uh, thought uh, about the the people who left Israel uh, and how they how they traveled through the, the through the desert, and it says over there that you know, when they transgressed, God afflicted the edge of the camp. The edge of the camp. It usually started with the edge of the camp. Who were the who were the camp? The, the Jews traveled in, in tribe, tribal formation. 
with the Mishkan, the portable temple in the middle. So the edges of the of the camp were inhabited by the Arab Rav in Hebrew, or the mixed multitude of, of Gentiles who uh, came out with the Jewish people and at a time uh, started to transgress by uh, uh, by falling back to their old ways, their old habits. And that's uh, where we learn not to assimilate. It's a, it's a people that dwelled alone, not to be counted amongst the nations. That's in numbers. Look them up, write them down, 23 9. It's a people that dwells alone. It should not be counted amongst the nation. So there we gave you a kasha from, uh, from our everyday knowledge, from the uh, Chumash, from the five books of Moses, and also from the, from the Talmud, right? We learn the Talmud. All, uh, it, we, learn, we, learn about, uh, we learn about the Talmud. And that's why it's so important to, to learn uh, the Talmud, and it's in English. Everything is in English, and, and uh, you can get the same meaning and the same kasha and and terrors, uh from from Talmud to make you feel good. And you get double points. You get double points by by saying a kasha and a terrors in the in the Talmud. And I'm going to give you a kasha and a terrors from the Talmud. Because every session we learn, we, we learn Talmud, and we call Talmud time. And one kasha and, and terror from the Talmud is as follows. In the very beginning the, uh, of the Talmud, the first Gemara that we, we learn, it says, Me'amosai Torah Neshma Biyami, we learn this every week. From when to when are the parameters of saying the Shema Yisrael prayer? Of the evening. What are the parameters? And everyone agrees, you know, the beginning parameter, when can be, but you can say Shema Yisrael prayer all day long, but in order to get your daily credit, you have to say it in the evening at a certain time. And, 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 the, and the times are in the beginning parameter, when the three stars come out. And everybody, you see, uh, Rabbi Judah Nasi, he called all the teachings and he came up with a consensus that everybody agreed. All the rabbis and the majority of rabbis agreed that the onset parameter of when we can begin to say the Shema Yisrael of the evening and get credit for it is when the three stars come out. Okay? So what does Gemara, what does the, the Talmud say? It says, Me'amosa Korona Shema Biyarvim From when to when can we learn can we read the Shema Yisrael of the evening? The answer? Not when the three stars come out. Me'amosa From the time that the Koenim enter to eat their Truma. From the time that the Kohenim entered to eat their truma. Well, what kind of answer is that? I mean, every, well, everybody agrees that the three stars come out. So why did it, why did it say from the time that the Kohenim entered to eat their truma? That's a kasha from, from, from the Talmud. Kasha from the Talmud. And, 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 and think about the question. I'm not going to give you the answer because you could get the answer from from getting getting an English uh, a Talmud, right? It's the first the first ones that we learn, the first words. Or you can ask your rabbi. But you can review it in your mind what you can review in your mind what that kasha is and you get good points for it, right? Remember that that kasha. Right? How come it doesn't write when the three stars come out? Everyone agrees to it. It's a 
from the time that the Kohanim enter to eat their truma. What kind of answer is that? Why does it answer that way? That's, now, the question is, many, many places, uh, they, the psychologists and the sociologists and the historians wonder why uh, the Jews survived, right? We, we were exiled from all the nations of the world, and one by one they threw us out, but they, they can't understand why we keep surviving. In other words, we should be uh, ass assimilated into the cultural of the uh, culture of the uh, 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 predominant culture of, of that country. But it doesn't happen. Why doesn't it happen? What does it say over here? Uh, because of divine history books because of a divine history book, a.k.a. Torah, because of a divine history book, the Torah, that we bring with us. Not everybody is not running to the new country from 1290 in, in England. They were kicked out until 1600 when they were uh, allowed to come back because uh, they wanted to uh, uh, have some basis for or divorce, or whatever, and the king, whatever, they allowed them back for, after 400 years. So what, what are we saying? That because of the divine book, the history book of the Torah. Yeah, we have, we have a history book. It tells us. Now, only the history book, not everybody's running there with their Torah, and their, but there is a few individuals, it's like in America, and after World War II, there's a few individuals that have that strong desire, that strong character to emulate Abraham and to set up schools that teach Torah day and night. And, and, and slowly, those that are not gifted with such character traits are weaned back to the Torah. They're weaned back because, now, it's very interesting to know, when did we get the Torah? After we, the Jews went out of Egypt. When they went out of Egypt. That's when they got the Torah. When they marched from uh, the 50th day, uh, from Passover to Shavuos, and on the 50th day, when you declared the holiday of Shavuos, and we got the Torah. But when did we get there? We got the Ten Commandments. Where is the Torah with the five books of, of Moses? How could that have been given if, if, if the history was not, if the history uh, was, uh, was not executed? There was a future time that the Torah talks about, and, and it goes up to Exodus, right? Right? It said, you got the Ten Commandments, you got the Ten Commandments, and then it says, Ve'ed and Mishpatim, in 21, and you got the civil laws, responsibilities, liabilities, those are 20, uh, up to chapter 24 in Exodus, chapter 20 to chapter 24, those are the, the torts, those are the torts, the civil laws, Liabilities, responsibilities, judgments. They, 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 they were given, and, and, and God told Moses to tell all of this book to the, to the Jewish people. And it's called Sefer Havaris, the book of the covenant, in chapter 24. And, and God said, wait. I want you to write that down in the book, the book called Sefer Habris, the book of the covenant. And then read it to them. And he did so, and all the people said, Nasa and Hebrew, Nasa Venishma. We will do and we will learn. We will do what was written in the, uh, that you taught us, and we learned them. So, 
because that's that's the book that that uh, we 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 got, and basically it was it was the Sefer of Bris and the Ten Commandments. But what did they? How did they get the rest of the Torah? They were in the desert for forty years. What are they doing in forty years with the Ten Commandments and the Sefer of Bris? They figured out all the commandments, all the commandments and directives and the orders and ordinances that they should follow from the Ten Commandments. That's how they learn, and, and, and that's how it's written. And some, and, and the, it was written down. Finally, it was completed in the forty years of their traveling. They 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 took the ark. And, and they went to a, a, a different place, and they, they had, in 40 years, they did 42 stops. And one stop was 19 years. And finally, in Deuteronomy chapter 31, 24, right, write it down. I mean, you, you just can't, you, you got to work. It's, you pick up some of these sukim, and you can expand on them. Read Rabbi uh, Victor Miller's comments on the Cedra. So, where were we? So, in uh, 19 stops, and then, and, and Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 24, it said, God dictated the, the ten, uh, God dictated the Torah to Moses. And Moses wrote 12 copies and gave them each tribe a copy of the Torah. He gave each tribe a copy of the Torah. Now look, I, you have to review this a little bit, uh, uh, you know, uh, to get all the things together, but basically that's, that's the outline. 31, 24, they, they, they was dictated to them. And, and that's why we, that's why the Jews the Jews believe. That's why the Jews believe, because they got the divine history book that they learned for uh, for forty years, and then they got the finished copy, and and so and there was witnesses. Three million Jewish forefathers traveled during those forty years. Three million men, women, and children. Where does it say that? It says in Numbers, Book of Numbers, it says over there, Book of Numbers, that there, all the, the men from ages 20 to when they go to war, doesn't say the end parameter, until when they go to war, number, six, number 603,550. And so, they didn't count the older people or the younger people, but under 20. And so that comes to about a million, and you multiply that uh, by, by two, uh, the women and, and, and children. So it comes out to three million people were witnesses. They were witnesses, our forefathers. Or there may be some people that are not so strong and, 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 and fall away. I mean, that's the ninth uh, commandment of the Ten Commandments. What did it say? There was darkness. Those people who, who believed not wholeheartedly and disbelieved, like it says in, in 29, in Deuteronomy 29, um, uh, 13, again, 29, 13. And if there be an individual amongst you that is a, that a, a, a gall and wormwood is attached to him, and an evil inclination follows, and he claims that peace will be for me, even though I go in my own ways. That's what he thinks. But we know that doesn't happen because 
those individuals that didn't have that characteristic were were done away with in a, in a, in a plague of, of darkness. Those Jews and uh, uh, were were done away with. So right, we have to we have to go. So here here we have three million. That's why we believe. I mean, we have. You know, the Roman civilization, uh, they all came after us. Sparta, Greek civilization, Babylonians, they, they all were powerful. The Third Reich, they all were powerful, they could do what we do. And yet still in all, the few individuals that have that strong characteristic of of wanting to, to keep the promise that the Jewish people made with God and that they passed through the covenant. Right, and that's what it says over there in 29, um, 29 uh, 64. With these words, with these words, I seal the covenant with you besides the covenant that I made at Chorev. Well, where is Chorev? Chorev is the area where Mount Sinai was, was located. So here are the areas that, that we have. Uh, at three million. Three million at each, at each stop. Splitting of the sea, splitting of, of the sea of reeds. Three million people saw that and they traveled through the isles. At, at, at Torah at Sinai, at Mount Sinai, the Torah at Mount Sinai, there were three million witnesses over there. So, of course, we, we have that feeling that we want to uh, keep our, our covenant with God. Uh, uh, of the, the ten plagues in Egypt. There were three million enslaved Jewish people there. They saw this happening. Of course they know what was happening. And, and that God was in back of it. And that's why we'll, there'll be strong people no matter where we are in exile. We'll, we'll set up schools of learning for men, women, and children. Mana from heaven. Water, it rained mana. Rained. Mana tasted like anything you wanted to taste like. It rained mana. Just like rain comes from heaven, so does manna come from heaven. And they had it for 40 years in the desert. There were three million witnesses. Now water from the rock. Water from the rock, three million witnesses. And, and, and chapter 8, verse 2 and 3, it says uh, that uh, bread, uh, man, God does not live, again, man does not live by by bread alone, what comes out of the mouth of God. And, and it's, the feet did not swell. And, and, the, and the clothing grew with them, on them. So these are miracles. And, 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 and now that's why we will continue to exist. There will always be a... a there, is al there will always be a a characteristic uh, that will make Jews come together. And, and I see it in my own family, thank God, Bliyai and Hara, that, that my son, uh, uh, who's in dentistry, has a dental practice, and he has a outreach program that goes over the entire nation to give high school credits to high school seniors credits for college if they take the course. He also does, he has about eight men that learn Tamil with him for over 10, for over 10 years. And his son, Kolev, has that too. Being he's in, in college and, and going for a profession, he 
also invite on many holidays people from the school to his home where they can enjoy a Jewish holiday. So we have that in our genes. But what you have to do is don't say, well, listen, I have to, I have to get him a good job and, and, and therefore, uh, and therefore uh, he, he got to be a half a day in Torah studies. No, uh-uh. That's not how it works. It can't be a half a day uh, equal to a sector of something and a half a day Torah. How much Torah can you get? No, my children, got, uh, thank God, they, they, they went to school where they learned uh, all day Torah. And from five to seven, that's when he had secular subjects. Because if you learn Torah so, so much, so greatly, it's a snap when you come to secular sub subjects. So that's why when you uh, send your children to school, find a place that emphasizes Torah with secular behind. Now, uh, their gods, uh, you know, uh, their gods, you know, have no witnesses like the Jewish people have witnessed. Uh, they, 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 they make human decrees. And while, while the Torah and, and, and Deuteronomy, we can uh, make a drush, uh, Deuteronomy 30 verse 19. 30, chapter 30 verse 19, what does it say over there? I put before you life and death. Choose life that you may live. That you may live. That's what it says. Choose life that you may live. And that's talking about an address to the next world. And Ecclesiastes, who Solomon wrote, the wisest man on his planet, the 12th of 12, verse 7, the soul returns to God who gave it. And the last sentence in that, in that chapter, is it some of the matter when everything is considered? The, the observance and, and performance of the mitzvahs is all that matters. That's what he wrote. Look at it. Ecclesiastes, Kohelis in Hebrew. And, and, and chapter 12, I think it's uh, uh, verse 14, the last uh, chapter. So we, we have, we, we have... And, and so, what, what does it say? Mitzvah, the acronym for do, you have to look out for mitzvahs. Good deeds, that's, those are mitzvahs, but you get double, double points if you learn Torah. We gave Torah out and to, and you tell the people, let the people know, people don't appreciate it, they never went to yeshiva, they, how they expect to learn, to learn daf yomi, they never get to first base yet, they never went to school. How are you going to do it? Let them, let them look into the, into this program. I gave you a kasha and a terrace for a, for a mitzvah to do a good deed. I gave you a kasha and a terrace on, uh, on, 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 the, on the Bible from the Chumash, the 210 years, uh, Egypt, and, and the, one time for the Amalek. And I gave you a kasha on, on, the, on this time frame of saying, uh, saying the, the Talmud. Uh, saying the Talmud. So that's it. Not only do you learn for yourself, but in, in any way you can, you have to let the people learn. And it's not like giving speeches like I'm doing here, but they have to, they have to get the book. Rabbi, first you get Rabbi Victor Miller, Behold the People, and etc. You can get um, uh, Rejoice O Youth, which is ideology. So many books, you, you can't get it all at once, but do a little bit at a time. Little by little. Yeah, so that's what it says. Uh, yeah, so remember, we did a viewer's test, and, and, and uh, that's what it, it says over there, that uh, how, the Jewish, how the Jews survived, and uh, we wanted to, to do some other things today. But uh, look, tell your friends. Uh, uh, that uh, give them some chizik, some inspiration to make them learn. But, but they have to learn themselves, not listen to speeches. And, and the synagogue and the rabbi in the synagogue has to be uh, 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 speechless. And, and they should set aside before the kiddish time to learn. 
and, and give them books in English, whoever, whatever level they're at. Make sure that he is in a Seder. So uh, I'm going to conclude with, with what Hillel said, and, and basically uh, what he said was, uh, if, if I am not uh, for me, uh, who will be for me? If, uh, and if I only for myself, uh, what am I? If not now, when? With that, I wish you all the best and to grow in Torah and good deeds. Thank you.